Welcome to this presentation of a new agency structure for research and innovation funding in Sweden. My name is Ingrid Peterson, and I have been the public investigator in a re review committee. And I'm Charlotte Hall. And I'm Joakim Appelqvist. And uh, here you can see what task have we had during our work. And I read it. A review committee shall investigate the organization of public competitive funding of research and innovation, the government agencies responsible for funding of research and innovation. And in our terms of reference, of course, they are longer and there are also some other issues which we have investigated, but this is really our core remit. And why? For a long time, there has been a discussion in Sweden about the balance between the core funding to universities and the external funding. But there has also been a discussion about that there are so many different funding organizations in Sweden. And of course, that's good because it gives maybe more resources, but also it might give a more scattered system. OECD has uh, pointed at this twice, I think, but also previous reviews, governmental reviews. But there are also other reasons why there is time for change. There has been a debate that we can see that the quality, the excellence of the Swedish research is going down if we compare to other countries. We can also see that it's been difficult for the public funders to really go together for big programs, for example, quant computing, in artificial intelligence, and other areas. If we see what's happening in the world, we can see that there are really big challenges. For example, if we look at the Sustainable Development Goals, nearly all goals, we are going back. And uh, in the UN, they are talking about that we need more research, more innovation, and more knowledge to be able to uh, achieve or obtain the goals. The system in Sweden was uh, analyzed, I think, 25 years ago and put in place 23 years ago. So our system is quite old. At the same time, there has been reforms in other countries and mainly some kind of consolidation. And if we looked at Sweden in relation to other countries, we have had difficulties, I think, to really be strong within the European Union and to uh, prioritize. So I think it's also what's happening in other countries which put a pressure on Sweden to reform our system. So. Uh, in the current system, which are the big organizations? I think we have the big five, the five public funding agencies, and that's Energimyndigheten, uh, or the Agency for Energy. We have four, we have four months. We have the Swedish Research Council, Vetenskapsrådet, and Vinova. Those are the big five. Their task is to fund research and innovation. But we also have other uh, agencies, governmental agencies, which might have an other core task, but they are also funding competitive research or innovation. And it's uh, 20 or 15, it depends how you look at them. So if we look in the future, our proposal is to consolidate the system and to have three public funding organizations, the science agency, the strategic research agency, and the innovation agency. And in a really summary, establish three new agencies, the science agency, the strategic research agency, and the innovation agency. And all public competitive funding should be allocated through these agencies. We propose to close down 
Formas fått the Wetenskapsrådet för Nova and the competitive funding part of the Swedish Energy Agency and that the competitive funding by agencies with it, other organizations should go to this free. And now, Falot, maybe you should introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I'm uh, Charlotte Tal, one of the uh, secretaries in this um, uh, in this investigation, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the three proposed uh, uh, agencies, starting with the science agency. And here you can see uh, an overview of the organization. And um, the organization is there to support the tasks, of course, of the agency. And the, the tasks of the science agency they, is to um, provide support for basic research of the highest quality in all fields of science. The science agency also have a task to, to support groundbreaking research and a third task, major task, to, to support um, research uh, infrastructure in initiatives. And we see um, here to the, to the right, we see the organization of this agency. And it's governed by a board. The board has nine members, six appointed by the research community and three by the government. And it also has a number of, of um, formal decision-making bodies. We, have, we, su we suggest that there will be four scientific councils which together cover all fields of science. Uh, I really want to stress that all fields of science. And we also suggest two different uh, decision-making bodies for research infrastructure, one for the very l large research infrastructure, the large scale in research infrastructure, and another for a digital research infrastructure. So the blue part of this um, uh, sketch is uh, compulsory. Uh, it's decided by the government. It's, uh, the, the organization has to look like that in our proposal. And the green part of the sketch is for the agency itself to decide. And we think that the tasks of the agency will also be reflected in the organization, the internal org organization of the Swedish Science Agency. So we see, of course, that there is a need for, for uh, some kind of structure for strategic analysts and for administration. We also think that there will be some kind of internal organization to, to work with the support for basic research of highest quality in all scientific fields. And we also think that there will be some kind of organizational structure to, to support the work with groundbreaking research. And moving on to the characteristic of the, the, this agency, uh, the science agency, as, as pointed out, the main objective is to find research of the highest uh, scientific quality in all fields of science. That uh, uh, means that uh, what follows of that is that most funding will probably go to, to basic research and also to applied research. And this agency will be responsible for ensuring that uh, research the research funding contributes to maintaining and strengthening the international competitiveness of, of Swedish research. Um, researchers are in the majority. Researchers determine the direction of the agency. Researchers uh, are all over, they really influence and, and, and decide in this uh, science agency. So priorities made by this agency is formulated by the scientific community and that will dominate all the activities in this agency. The lo logic of the, the agency is, uh, is based on scientific areas and we think it will be rare for this uh, agency to, to decide on thematic priorities. If so, it probably is uh, a decision uh, to prioritize something in the academic system, to strengthen something. The mo working method in this agency uh, is characterized by, by peer review of um, 
composed of panels uh, where researchers are included. And uh, the, 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 the agency, the, the science agency, uh, will have to figure out new ways to support uh, research infrastructure, both the large scale infrastructure and the digital infrastructure. And let's have a look at the next uh, authority, the Street Strategic Research Agency. Here's a, ske a sketch of the organization. And um, the blue parts of this organization is the compulsory. There is a board. And the board members are appointed by the government. Uh, and all other parts of the, uh, the internal organization of this agency is uh, for the agency itself to decide on. Um, the task for this agency, uh, the Swedish Agency for Strategic Research, is to support research and innovation activities of importance to society and to industry, to finance research and innovation that supports um, uh, some uh, areas, some uh, that are important for other Swedish agencies. Uh, um, this agency will be responsible for a central function for uh, international work. And it will also provide a system, uh, an IT system for application and case management. Uh, we see a need for, um, in the internal organization, uh, we see, an, of course, a need for administration and uh, strategic analysis. And we think that the staff in this agency must be very skilled in interacting with the uh, external stakeholders. And they will also need to have a deep knowledge and experience of key sectors, different key sectors in Sweden. And we encourage uh, this, uh, this authority to set up advisory bo bodies that represent stakeholders from society, from business, and from the research community. If we look at the, the, what this agency does, the Strategic Research Agency, uh, to remind you again, it funds research and innovation of importance to key sectors in, in the Swedish society, including the private sector. Uh, this agency will not have any uh, thematic restrictions. It, it, it can run initiatives targeting any sector uh, of, uh, of society. It can find any type of activities in the field of research in, and innovation that is needed, that the uh, agency deems needed to solve a problem um, and that where there is a need. And what uh, the, fund, uh, the agency funds is, is driven by needs uh, and it can change over time. And it will probably work with portfolios or something equivalent to that. Uh, we think that this uh, agency will work uh, a lot with long-term initiatives. And most of the funding will be in basic research, applied research and in innovation. As said before, this uh, agency will be responsible for all formal international co collaborations, Swedish international collaborations in the field of research and innovation, including a national organization for the particip participation in EU programs. And uh, a, a very important task for this uh, agency is to take over the responsibility to fund research and innovation activities that support other governmental agencies. So it needs to be able to collaborate with other agencies uh, to make the greatest uh, possible benefit. Uh, and also, as mentioned before, it, it, it will uh, develop and manage uh, an administrative system that will be used to publish calls for proposals, to handle applications and to monitor projects, uh, to follow up projects. And this system will be used by all the three new agencies. And it's important that it's coordinated and that it's easy to use. 
Moving on to the innovation agency, the third uh, proposed agency. Here's a, a sketch over the agency's organization, and let's start with the tasks. Uh, this agency has three uh, main tasks. Uh, one is to support the transformation of society and industry. Another is to finance research and innovation that leads to solutions to complex societal problems. And a third task is to support innovation activities in small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs. Uh, this agency is governed by a board. The members are appointed by the government. And we think it should be, uh, a, it, the members should represent the public se sector, the business community and society at large. And apart from the board, there are no compulsory organizational structures. The innovation agency uh, is free to organize uh, the internal organization as they find fit. We think again that the tasks will be reflected in the internal organization. Uh, and we want to stress that the, it's very important that the innovation agency is free. It has the freedom to develop new ways of working and that also, of course, in, inflicts the organization as such. It will probably change over time. They need to test, evaluate and change. And uh, uh, let's have a quick look at the characteristics of the Innovation Agency. Um, it supports um, the transformation of society in a direction that makes it possible to solve the challenges of society and at the same time strengthen the competi competitiveness of business. So it needs to support the implementation of knowledge and ideas uh, as solutions. It needs to support innovation activities in SMEs. And the main organization principle ex is exploitation, implementation, and dissemination of results. This agency will, will uh, be a support function for other governmental agencies and administration in developing working methods that is needed for for uh, uh, developing regulations that are adapted to new innovation and that uh, uh, and addresses uh, challenges in society, society and business. So it needs to be support for cross-cutting operations in the public sector and, and, and to work with states, regions and municipalities. We see that this innovation agency has a broad toolbox policy policy labs, uh, regulatory sandboxes, innovation procurement, for example. It needs to work in a new way, uh, not just uh, uh, open calls, but new ways. Uh, and um, it's, uh, it needs a lot of freedom, both in instruments of funding and the way the agency itself works. Joakim, maybe you should introduce yourself. Yes, I will. Uh, my name is uh, Joakim Appelqvist and I have also worked as uh, one of the secretaries in this uh, review committee. So now Charlotte has, has run through all the different agencies and, and, and presenting their different character characteristics. In, in, in the slide now you see, you can see a summary of that. Uh, the, uh, what are the different characteristics of the agency? But looking at them, uh, at them uh, as a whole, uh, comparing them, it's worth noting that it's the agency structure as a whole uh, that ha is responsible for and w which will also cover all types of research uh, and innovation that is needed in Sweden. So there are no, uh, no gaps, uh, is, is our view, in, in this new system. It's also worth noting that there are no formal limitation in, in terms of what type of funding, what actors to address and, uh, and, and what themes to, to work in between these different agencies. But given the different mission statements and, and the different ways these bodies are uh, governed, it's our strong belief that these three agencies will be very distinct and have their own ways of, of operating. So it will be a clear system in, in that sense. 
Uh, and it's also worth no noting something that is not in the picture. This new structure is not structured uh, using a sector approach or a thematic approach. So these are open bodies that are uh, that has the mission to to fund the the research that is prioritized by by the the stakeholders that that are in the governing bodies of these new agencies. Uh, looking at the size of these agencies, uh, you have a slide here where, the, where you have the new agencies in numbers. Um, before I, I, I go through some of the some of the slides that are uh, some of the numbers that are on the slides, I would just like to highlight the, the calculations and, and assessments that we have been uh, doing as part of our work is based on the on the the uh, the sizes of the current agencies. So the big five that uh, Ingrid showed on in the first slide, the big five uh, funding agencies and also these other 15 uh, agencies with, with other uh, core missions. So, so that is, those numbers have been used as a basis for, for calculating the, the sizes of these new agencies. So what do you see? Uh, you can see that the uh, science agency will be the largest agency in the new uh, structure in terms of how much uh, funds are allocated uh, by them, so 8.2 billion billions annually. Uh, you can also see that the strategic research agency will will be the largest one in terms of the number of staff, uh, 340 people. And, and the reason why uh, the Strategic Research Agency is the biggest one is, is as Charlotte mentioned, it will require a lot of interaction with stakeholders in the surrounding society in order to make the right uh, priorities. You can also see here the number two, uh, the number two billions. Uh, that is the amount of funding that is now allocated through agencies with another core mission, those funds are transferred into the strategic research agency. So that's the reason for, for that number. I should also say that the operational costs that you can see here are cal calculated uh, using the, the number of staff as a, as a, as a ba baseline. Uh, having presented these new agencies, we are now taking perhaps a step back but, and we would like to present some of our arguments and, and also uh, our expected impact, what we see will happen if the government w should choose to go with our proposal. Starting with the challenges, uh, as uh, Ingrid mentioned in, in the start, we have uh, seen a stagnating uh, scientific quality uh, in Swedish research over the last at least 10 years. And, and this is a bit um, uh, worrying, uh, uh, considering that there has been large uh, resource increases, increases during the same time. Over the period that we have looked here, uh, the 23 years that the, the current structure have been in place, uh, the, the, um, the funding for research and innovation by the government has doubled in fixed prices, but we still haven't seen a, a the same development in terms of, of uh, scientific quality. We can also see an increasing international uh, competition in the field of research and innovation. Many countries around the world have recognized the importance of, of investing in, in, uh, in research and innovation, and, and there are massive initiatives in other countries. And in order for Sweden to um, to stay competitive, be one of the top top performers, both in terms of science and innovation. We need to continue to invest, but we also need structural reforms. Um, we also see complex societal challenges. Uh, you can just look at the newspaper now with, with the climate challenges. We have a problem with organized crime in Sweden. There are, are uh, geopolitical um, um, challenges uh, surfacing. Uh, uh, so we really need to address these challenges also using research and innovation. Uh, so that's another uh, reason for making this, this change. Connected to the geopolitical situation, we see that there has been a, a um, really paradigmatic shift in the way new technologies are both developed but also used. Moving away from a situation in the around from from the uh, shift of the millennium to now, where a lot of the technological development was done in global networks. And now we have moved on to a situation where regions and, and individual countries are competing 
to develop and have access to these technologies. Sweden, as a, as a small country, but must really take that new situation into account and build the funding structures and, and other institutions that, that make, makes it possible for us to uh, be part of these developments, but also to develop uh, technologies of our own. Uh, finally, we also see an increasing need for knowledge and innovation broadly in society. Certainly in our very highly knowledge intensive uh, private sector, uh, we see continued need for, for uh, uh, investments in, in research and in innovation also from, from government. But we also see an increasing need and there is a... Uh, there has not been enough investments over the years in the public sector and in civil society. So here we also see a need for change in how we address these sectors. What benefits do we see with, with our proposal? Well, first of all, we, we argue that by uh, going from a system with, with more than 20 funding agencies towards the three that we're proposing, we will get a more comprehensive system. The reason is to, that the system what, that we have today, we have a lot of agencies that work uh, via a sector approach or a thematic approach. This has resulted in a system where some areas and some types of research has a lot of funding opportunities, while others have very small funding streams, or in some cases, there is no funding at all available. By moving away from that principle to a, to a system where we have these three agencies that have a very broad mandate, uh, we uh, we argue that we are building building uh, away these um, these uh, gaps that we have in, in in the current system, and that there is a clear um, obligation for the. Uh, especially the uh, uh, strategic research agency to make sure that there is available funding in areas of strong importance for, for Swedish society and business. We also say we also argue that with this new structure that we we will be better to mobilize um, uh, Swedish stakeholders uh, to meet stri strategic priorities. Uh, where we have this system with a lot of different agencies making their own priorities, it has been very hard to uh, work together and to mobilize, especially to influence the EU agenda for research and innovation, but also make larger initiatives connected to, 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 to many of the research infrastructure that has been established in Sweden over the years. And by creating these new centralized functions, both in the science agency with regard to large-scale infrastructure and also the, uh, the central function for internationalization at the, in the uh, strategic research agency. We think that we are uh, creating the strategic muscles to be much more present and, and have a larger impact in these areas going forward. Another very important uh, benefit with our proposal is the simplification of the funding system. Uh, when we move from a lot of agencies to, to the three that we propose, uh, we will have uh, uh, it will be much easier for researchers and, and other applicants to find the available call for proposals, which will make it easier for, for the ones that are applying for funds and also receiving funds. Uh, uh, so, th so that will be an improvement. Also, with our proposal to introduce a joint system for um, uh, applications and, and task management, we will all think that that will uh, radically reduce the administrative uh, uh, burden. So it will be, will be a simpler system to, to work in. One thing that has come up in a lot of the dialogues that uh, we have had with the Swedish stakeholder during our uh, work uh, this year is, is the the longing for more long-term funding. We think that by creating these three agencies with clear tasks and with relevant stakeholders making the strategic decision that we now are building uh, a system that will will be more predictable and will can also be uh, provide more long-term funding going forward. Uh, 
the fifth point here concerns accountability. This, this has been a very uh, important principle to strengthen that in, in, in the new system that we are uh, proposing. Uh, today's system, where you have a number of different agencies, many of them funding similar research and in similar fields, it is very hard for the government to really uh, pinpoint who needs to change, who is responsible for the outcomes that we can uh, observe. Uh, by creating these three new agencies, it will be agencies. It will be much easier to pinpoint uh, and and to start a dialogue with with the uh, management of an of an agency. For instance, if we see a continued decline in scientific quality, or if there is a lack of funding in areas uh, that are of importance to Swedish industry, then you call up the management for the science agency or the ministry. Uh, or the uh, strategic research agency and, and uh, have them explain what their plans are for the future. Uh, finally, we believe that the new structure will be more adaptable. This goes, uh, goes both for the overall steering of, of a system, making changes in research uh, policy. Here you can change the balances budget between the different agencies so that you can have more focus on, on excellence, research-driven research, or more uh, implementation projects uh, if you decide to increase the budget for the innovation agency, for instance. It will also be much easier to um, adapt if there is an arising need in a certain area. For instance, the problem with organized crime, if we would, you would like to start a research initiative in that area, it's easy to direct funds to, to the strategic research agency or the innovation agency. And you will not need to erect a new agency or to give a very complex government assignments to another uh, to a, to a number of different agencies where they need to collaborate. It will be much easier to do that in the new structure. Uh, we also believe that this this new uh, agency structure will uh, increase the efficiency of the way the the agency work. Uh, as mentioned by both me and, and Charlotte, we see a need for new functions and, and to develop new ways of working in the new agencies, for instance, with uh, working with policy labs or working with uh, having more focus on, on international uh, collaboration. We believe, believe that by removing a lot of the duplications of, of positions in the, in the current system when moving to fewer agencies, we will create these, uh, these resources without increasing the the number of employees. Uh, we also see that uh, even though we are adding a number of, of uh, tasks to the new agencies, we believe that there can be a minor reduction in the, in the number of staff in the, in the funding agencies uh, if the new proposal would be introduced. We, we have calculated that possibility for reduction to uh, 20 full-time equivalents. Um, Perhaps more important, we see that the simplification in terms of reduced administrative burden and an easier and, and a fewer uh, call for proposals will, will free up a lot of resource in the higher education uh, institution, the universities, etc. Uh, we have made a calculation of, of, of that and, and we believe that it could be as much as up to 300 full-time equivalents uh, that can, the timing, the time of these professionals in, inside the universities can be moved from administration to, to research, which we think is a strong benefit of this proposal. Finally, we also see that the, in, in the agencies that are, have another core mission, uh, a lot of people are uh, working with, uh, performing these call for proposals, and that time will also be freed up when, when the task is moved, uh, or some of that time is freed up when moving the task to the strategic research agency. We have now presented the results of nearly exactly one year's work. And during this year, we have uh, read previous studies and uh, the output from previous reviews uh, from different committees. We have done a questionnaire. We have commissioned an international study. And also OECD have done some work for us. But we have had a lot of conversations. 
with funding agencies, with higher education institutions, with industry, with uh, public sector representatives, with regions. But also, we have had a group with experts from the different ministries, and I would like to thank them for all their input. We have had a sounding board, and they have also come with very good ideas and uh, also challenged us sometimes. And we have got written inputs and people have called us and coming with their ideas and uh, also proposals for the future. And I would really like to thank everybody who has given us output, challenged us, and you're all a part of our proposal. So thank you. And to conclude, for the future, we see a structure with three different agencies. The Science Agency, the Strategic Research Agency, and the Innovation Agency. And if I look at the government's priorities, excellence, we see with the research as driven science agency, here are the mainly excellence. We also have groundbreaking research in that agency as well as new ways of governing, I would say, the infrastructure, but also the strategic research agency. When industry or the public sector work together with academia, we can really see that that's its uh, base for excellent research. So there is the mainly focus on excellence. If I look at the second priority, internationalization, we have the strategic research agency, where we are really trying to put together a strong unit who will be responsible for EU, but also to be a speaking partner and a driving force in the new year political landscape and for science diplomacy. So that's innovation. And finally, innovation. We have both the strategic research agency and the innovation agency and where Sweden can take new steps on how to innovate and how to implement knowledge in society. So with that, I would say thank you to you all and thank you for listening to us here today. Thank you.